Hi everyone, Elena here for what is, I cannot believe it, our last tutorial together on the Fantasia on a theme by Thomas Tallis by Vaughn Williams. I can't believe it, this time has flown by and yet somehow I still haven't addressed the last page. So we'll definitely do that today. I'm going from letter T until the end, really working through that. And then I thought actually we would just play through um, all of the material that we're working on together. So the beginning until four after letter E, and then skipping until T until the end, just to iron out any last questions, maybe see if anything new arises, see if any points that we've addressed already, intonation, um, are worth repeating, and basically just getting a comprehensive overview of this music. Um, of course, if you're doing the improvisation, uh, I'll leave you to that. I'll just go through the printed material here, and um, yeah, just do one final playthrough. I'm sad. Okay, so let's start, um, this is four after letter T. Is that right? Yes, five after letter T. So these are big collective string, uh, string entrances together. Um, Karina conducts this so beautifully. She, so, she shows exactly what she wants in her hands and her breath. So for gestures like this, especially ones that come off of um, come on off beats, let's really make sure we feel that space, that silence, that rest. Um, feel it in our breath, feel it in our stomachs. Okay. So, I'm imagining what comes before it. Hopefully you have your score with you. Mm. <laughs> Okay, lots going on in this gesture. So I noticed I, I did um, a habit that I'm not totally crazy about with myself. I kind of, I was conducting myself for the entrance, but then I sort of conducted each motion. I wanna keep my violin still and really focus all of that energy and intention into the bow. And then I wanna make a huge diminuendo because we go from forte, pesante, heavy, all these dashes, all the way to triple piano. So let's really make that contrast. Oh, I like that better. I like exhaling so that the up bow is then on an inhale. So breath in, breath out. Conductor. Now piano. So three really different sentences here. The first one is the most emphatic, the next one is a reaction, and then we've winnowed our sound all the way down to a piano. So really pay attention to what part of the bow you're in, how much bow you're using. Again, what are all the different ways we can produce different types of sound? More weight, less weight, more speed, less speed, um, closer to the bridge, further away from the bridge, and number of hairs. I can't remember which tutorial I said it in. Maybe that was Tchaikovsky. Anyway, those are the eight more or less main ways of altering the sound. Of course, there are all sorts of other complexities and nuances on top of that, changing direction, etc. But those are eight really simple ways um, that you can kind of check in with yourself, see what you need. Do I need more weight, more uh, speed, less hair, etc. Let's do that one more time. Exhale. Accent. So just to recap, I was using more weight, uh, less speed, less bow, I was closer to the bridge, and then when it was time to diminuendo, I moved my bow further away from the bridge, used a bit more air in the sound, fewer hairs. So a lot of things working at once. I'll do a similar thing for this second sentence. And 
stay closer to the tip. Okay, so let's go on. Now we're in a long um, passage of tremolo for us. So we really, we want to be simultaneously out of the way, but without drawing too much attention to ourselves, really shaping everything that's going on around us. So we're like the, um, we're like the, the sidekick, the, the, the funny best friend that's really making the movie much more interesting, but sadly doesn't get the credit. But like we know everyone else is going to look really great and we're going to know that we made them that way. <laughs> so sur la touche, we want this to be over the fingerboard, really breathy, not a lot of hair, um, probably further up in the bow and just relax the right hand, kind of like you're you're petting something really soft or you're like brushing your teeth, but you're pretty chilled out about it. And one of the cool things about tremolo, and remember that of course you're going to be in an enormous section. What makes a tremolo really interesting in an orchestral section is if everyone is doing it they have the same intention, but everyone's stroke will be a little longer, a little shorter, a little faster, a little slower. And that blend of sounds really makes something magical. So find what works for you. Maybe you want to try it slower in some places. Maybe you can do a faster tremolo stroke, um, breathier, more concentrated. Play around with it and really see if you can shape your sound according to the phrase. And hopefully everyone around you will be doing the same thing. Keep breathing. So we, when, whenever there's a change of note or harmony, that's something to draw a little more attention to, a little something sparkly, maybe in the left hand as well. arms getting tired slow it down a little bit that's okay and now we're supporting the melody now we want a crescendo so how do we do that maybe move a little further down the bow closer to the bridge Or if you just want to pick one line, maybe a broader stroke here. And you can take a little bit of space to prepare yourself for a regular arco stroke here. Maybe breathe, exhale on the down bow. Diminuendo. So in this section, this is such a fun place to play with all the different ways you can use your bow, um, whether you're doing sustained strokes or the tremolo. So again, recap. There's weight. Let's not even think of it of, as pressure and never think of it as force. The weight of our arm, so we can use a lot of gravity, a lot of weight or we can um, kind of pick the bow up more so that it's a bit lighter. We can use more speed, often more air in the sound to use more bow. Okay, so weight, more bow, more speed. Distance, proximity to the bridge, so it can be closer or further away. Number of hair. So those are the eight main options that we have. And within those eight, um, things that we can do with our bow, we've got infinite combinations. So no matter what stroke you're doing, always play around and see, um, see if you can find the sweet spot between those eight ideas. So now we are after X, one, two, three, four, fifth bar. If my bowings don't look like your bowings, I apologize. I'm just now realizing that I don't think I wrote them in for this section. So continue to do what you're doing. If you have questions, let me know. But this is a really nice opportunity also to um, 
to try out some different bowings. Of course, if you're in a professional orchestra, you're going to want to unify your bowings um, with the rest of your section, although not always. Some orchestras love free bowings. Um, but in general, I really encourage you all to explore different bowings, see what works for you, what works for one person at the tip might work better for you closer to the frog. You might breathe better, um, have more of a release of sound on an up bow or a down bow. You are your own person, own musician. So really explore and then own your choices and then be prepared to have a discussion about them. But don't ever let anyone tell you that this way is right, this way is wrong because music can't really be right or wrong. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Let's go one, two, three four, five, after X. Sorry, one more time. <laughs> this in one of my live sectionals but I think in this music we can use the hairpins these little baby dynamics not only to get louder and softer but um, to indicate motion in the phrase to really use the bow to create a sense of like a breeze rippling through the music so let's not only think of these as um, changers of volume but changers of motion once more so I'm going to save and then spend my bow. And this time on a down bow, maybe. My bow is never static. It's never just going back and forth in the same way. It's breathing. Just like lungs expand and contract, so can the bow. It's really fun. It also just makes it way more interesting to play. Um, this is letter Y. Now mezzo forte, so really more weight, more gravity here, more of an exhale. Or you can also pick one note. Um, I'm going to pick just the top note for clarity's sake. I'm gonna try the opposite bowing in case that didn't work. Again, please, try all sorts of bowings, or if you have one that you like or was assigned, stick with that. I'm just fooling around here, getting a little more acquainted with the material and how it fits into my arms. So I'm using the bow kind of to paint like big swaths of color. Um, in general, when it's a bit quieter, uh, before the motion starts, saving more bow, then when you see a hairpin or a crescendo, using more. So saving and spending, um, a real back and forth. Um, and then finally, we have the last gesture of the piece. The first violin solo has ascended up into the heavens, and now we join her. <laughs> important place to watch our other musicians, watch the conductor so that we really come to this final chord, this final exhale all together as one and really use your breath here. It's going to feel so good to exhale into this G major chord. Spend, exhale. And then as many bows as you need to. Eventually, don't 
slowly disappearing. So take as many bows as you need to so that you can hold this note forever and be watching everyone around you so that you know exactly the moment to trail off into silence. Okay, so I think now I'm going to play the whole thing through. I might stop here or there or add a couple comments while I'm playing, just things to remind you of. You can always pause at any point if you want to stop and make a note of something in your own part. Please refer to past tutorials where I went into things in more detail. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to play through. So I'll go from the beginning until um, second violins end third of E, and then I'll skip until a couple bars after T and go to the end. All right, here we go. I'm going to be patient with myself and kind. If something doesn't quite sound like I had hoped it would, it's okay. I'll come back to it later. I'll make a mental note, but this is just a check-in to see where I am in this moment. Okay, for now, I'm probably going to skip through this, so we're at A. I'm going to do free bowing, but if you've got a bowing, do your thing. Really shaping. Shaping the line. Okay. 
My rhythm was a little weird. A crescendo. Okay, so a lot of things I observed from myself. Not everything was exactly how I would have hoped. Some things were better than I could have hoped. Um, I, I, I kind of blew through a couple things just for time's sake, including the last note that wasn't anywhere near as long as it's going to be. Um, things to consider. I think for the second violin, for any inner voice part, actually any part, period, have the score. Work with the score. So. Um, just because I don't have enough space here in my little um, filming studio. Um, ordinarily, I would have the score open next to me so that I can match uh, what my part is doing. Uh, I can see what's happening, um, how it fits into the grander context. So definitely, um, whether you would like to practice with your part and the score, or take some time after you finish practicing and just listen, reading along in the score with your part nearby, just so that you get a more complete picture. That's so important. So have the score. Um, certain things, uh, yeah, there were, there were things I, I wasn't super happy about, but I think it's really important that I just went through and did that because now I have a clear idea of where I am, what to improve on next. There were definitely some of the moving notes between C and E, that got a little dicey, so I'll definitely go back, practice practice those calmly, um, spend some time on intonation. I will um, maybe think of a better plan for my bowings and fingerings in between X and Z. Didn't quite like where I, I ended up on some of those bows, but I have a clear idea now of what I would like to work on going forward. I think I can make even more beautiful sounds some places, maybe more air, more special stuff in the left hand. Um, but I feel happy that I have now this snapshot of where I am today. I might now take a break, rest my arms, do a bit of breathing, roll out my shoulders, prepare my body, be nice to myself, and then come back, maybe do it again, or maybe just isolate some spots. So I invite you to explore any of those options for your practicing. Um, Definitely here and there play through stuff so that you first of all have fun But then also just get to take a state step back and um, see your playing and your progress on a work um, From a broader perspective. So I hope all of this has been helpful as always Please continue to write to me with questions. I'll answer them the best as best I can I know sometimes I give quite abstract answers, but I guess that's just how my mind works um, but I'm happy to answer more technical concrete things as well. So I hope you've enjoyed our time together. I certainly have. I can't wait to see you all soon in person, I hope. Can't wait to play this together. And thank you for letting me lead you through this Vaughn Williams piece.